Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to set up the PCSX2 emulator to play PlayStation 2 games on your Mac. To do so it is actually really really simple. Just want to say this video does not condone piracy, it is for educational purposes only. You should get the BIOS files yourself, you know, rip them out here and, you know, rip your own games. So, but honestly, you know, if you Google it, you can find the BIOS files on the, you know, the games very, very easily. So, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and download PCSS, PCSX2. Go to the PCSX2 website. There'll be links to everything that I'll be showing you in the description. Go to download and scroll down. You don't want the stable release. And the reason for that is it's 1.6. This is pretty old at this point. You want to go to nightly release. It says, you know, sometimes buggy. I found it to be overall very stable. So you just want to go to the latest nightly, click download. You'll start downloading. But I've already got it downloaded, so I'm going to cancel that. And now what you want to do is uh, what I'll show you. So you will also have you want to get hold of you know the BIOS files. I've got them in a zip, and the game, my game that I'll be testing is Crash Bandicoot: The Wrath of Cortex. It's a .7z file, seven zip file. Both of these can be extracted using the built-in archive utility. Just double-click them; it will extract them. I'll do the BIOS as well, and I will also do the PCSX2 file. So, you know, whilst the game extracts. Now, for the PCSX2 file, you can rename it to just PCSX2 without the version if you want it. I'm going to leave it. Drag that onto applications, and that's installed now. And now, Crash Bandicoot, my game, has also extracted. You'll get two files, bin and Q. You really only need the bin file. That's the big file. Q just has some extra, you know, metadata regarding the game, but just, you know, leave them there. What I would recommend now is that you copy these somewhere on your computer and i'm doing it in documents you could do it on an external hard drive if you want to you want to create a folder called roms and you know just organize it you don't want it in like a download folder i'm going to put it here there we go and you could even put this in its own separate folder because pcsx2 can recursively you know scan folders which i'll show you you know momentarily when i scan the folders which means you can have it organized and you'll scan all folders within the within the pc ps2 folder now we can actually launch it up so if we we can even launch it from here or go to our search for pcsx2 if you get this no problem you go to your app icon you go to system settings you go to privacy and security scroll down to where you get that it was blocked click open anyway type in your password or use touch id click open and that's it you won't need to do these few steps again until let's say you uninstall and you know install the application again and now this will launch up the setup with it enable automatic updates that's fine you can change the theme i'm going to leave it as native change the system language i'm going to leave it as the default i think that makes sense and next now you want your bios files so go to open bios folder now in here you want to drop those files so if we go to downloads ps2 bios literally just copy all of these and you know whatever files that you have again you know if you have any questions regarding anything in the emulator feel free to post in the comments down below now what you want to do i'm going to close this as well we don't need this click refresh list so yeah we want the the europe one click next now we want to add some game directories you can add multiple so it's going to say add and go to documents roms ps2 click open and it says do you want to scan it recursively that's fine we want to do that again i don't have folders within it but if i did it will mean that it will scan everything properly click next now it is asking us about our controllers so you can set up a controller for port one and port two and i'll have a separate video covering how to do more than two controllers as well which is pretty cool and you want to set it up as dualshock unless you want to have like you know guitar or something like guitar hero automatic mapping is fine you just you know do keyboard and then we can i'll show you afterwards how to you know do custom mapping so you click next click finish it'll launch up 
it's found our game and there's a few settings that we want to look at so if we go to PC, PCSX2 preferences and in interface you can leave pretty much everything on default this is the interesting one so if you want to start the game in full screen you know you can start it in full screen i prefer not to i prefer to manually go to full screen but again that's totally up to you and you can also do a save state on shutdown as well so automatically and i will be showing save states automatically you'll do a save state and you know game list so you can add more files and a BIOS, you know, we've already set it up in emulation. And let me just resize that a little bit. So in emulation, you want to really leave all this as default. You don't want to mess with in graphics. The only real thing that you want to change here is your aspect ratio. If you want it on something more widescreen, like widescreen 16 by 9. If you go down that route, make sure you change the FMV aspect ratio as well. I'm going to leave it as the default. And what I recommend is that, okay, one thing you need to know, if you do the widescreen, you will get games that look a bit stretched. So that's just something that you have to bear in mind. I don't like that. I know some people prefer that if they don't want the black bars. They'd rather have it a bit stretched. But if, you know, if you do, you want that, that's how you sort it out. And next what we want to do is go to rendering and here internal resolution it this just makes the game you know look sharp it just makes it look better but you don't want to increase it too much because it, you know your game won't perform very well the frame rate will be low and i always recommend leave your native see how the game especially if it's something like Grand Turismo or god of war which is more intense on your you know hardware see how it runs if it runs well come back in knock it off like knock it up to 2x you know 3x or 4x see how it goes i've got an m1 pro um, you know I, I can go above native but you know i'm not gonna get get to 8x either and pretty much everything else you want to leave as default like anisotropic filtering you know we can whack it up to 16 next that's very it's not very taxing in terms of processing power it just helps you know unblur textures and next that's pretty much it you don't want to mess around with much else you can do fxaa you know to help the jagged staircase effect that you get around objects again i recommend you test the game if it's working properly then come in you know messing around with the internal resolution you know anti-aliasing that sort of stuff but if you have questions about what each and every setting does feel free to comment down below as well because like i said there's a lot of settings here you can do a tv shader as well so you can put make it look more like a crt but if you have questions feel free to let me know and for the renderer leave that as automatic it will figure out what is best and the compatibility is overall very very good so you'll do a good job for the adapter I mean, you can leave it as default, but I recommend selecting your Apple, you know, uh, you know, M1, M2, M3, whatever you have. And, it, you know, just in case there's something else connected or it detects some sort of software based approach. And in audio, uh, for the back end, you want to make sure something is selected because I've seen it where the emulator is just on null by default. And that's it. That's really all I would recommend making sure that you check. In memory cards, you now you want to create a memory card. So click create and i'm just going to call it memory card one and i know people will say you know go for like 64 megabytes or 32 megabytes but you know these are third party ones the eight megabyte one supported by all games and all bios versions that's the one i recommend if you're playing some ps2 games possibly you would want this one so eight megabytes click ok that's created and now what we're going to do yeah so just drag it on and now that has been selected so you can do the same steps if you want for memory card 2 feel free to do that and in network and hdd again i'll have a separate video covering the networking folders you know we, we can leave that as default and achievements you know you can enable that as well this is just some extra thing this, this wasn't built in initially and make sure uh, you do click you just click close and we're pretty much there so from here you want to go to cover downloader 
and the website i'll have a link to it there's a github page and in here scroll down to where you have these two urls so you can do default this is more like the original covers and then 3d covers i prefer the original click copy or you know just click copy there minimize paste start and it's downloaded click close and now if i click the grid icon it's now got the games cover up which is really nice and if you want to change the size of it you just change it like so i think that sort of size works really really well and there's some filters yeah and search you know but if you've got that many games like hundreds or thousands of games where you actually need to search but apart from that that's pretty much it you you won't really need to mess around with any other settings and never just play the game so one other thing i want to show you so i right click so you can manually set a cover image so if you want to download something else you can do but if you go to properties this will go to like the similar style properties but you'll see like it has like huge global settings that's just using the default settings but if you know let's say there's a particular game you check the compatibility list so if you was to go to like the website and you go to compatibility you have a look and if you know there's a particular game honestly it's very like most of them are playable but if you know the particular game that works better with certain settings you can configure the setting for that one game you know you might know that okay this game you can run it at four times the native resolution and this other game you can only run it at two times this allows you to do that for different you know titles and now we can launch it up by double clicking and actually you know what i'm gonna shut it down one thing i forgot to show you is if we go to settings controllers so this is where you can you know, map your controls so if you go to control port one to map you just click a you know key let's say that you press up or if i press left you know it's you know left as well and this is okay this is where you change your controller type there's some basic settings but honestly you want to leave that you can assign macros as well and you can do automatic mapping so this is where you would map your external controllers as well so if you have something like a game controller playstation 4 playstation 5 xbox nintendo switch this is where you can map those controls and i'll have separate videos covering how to you know map those controls as well and then once you're done you just want to click close or just click x and that's pretty much it you can have multiple profiles as well again it's a bit awkward because i've got it pretty zoomed in but you can have multiple profiles which allows you to have different sort of configurations for different games or different users and that's pretty much it so i'm just gonna launch up the game now gonna make sure the volume's off so it's not too loud or not loud at all and as, as you can see the game has now loaded so i'm just gonna get into some gameplay so you can see that and the only other thing that i'm gonna show you i just wanna just double check the controls Make sure I haven't forgot the controls. So start and select, return and backspace, a key and the face buttons. I J K L. Yeah, that's really the main things I would need. So it's running pretty well this is just the menu but now obviously i can go in change the graphics i can change the um the internal resolution so if i go to like 3x as you can see it's looking a lot sharper now so that's what that does just wanted to show you that So once we're in some in the game you're seeing some gameplay the last thing i'm going to show you is save and load states yeah let's just skip that so we can get into some gameplay I mean, it's always thinking you know, that we could control Crash Bandicoot, you know, in this. I'm pretty sure you can't. There you go. It's working really well. 
and then obviously that's where you can go in and you know change the setting like the internal resolution but i think this looks pretty sharp as it is a free x and you can you know add an anti-alias in etc for example i just want to show you a bit of gameplay and then i'll show you the save and load states i think they're one of the best things about any emulator that supports it is the save states definitely need a controller for this keyboard and mouse is not where it's at especially not on the mac Do not want to spin that bad boy. Ooh, so had some dropped frames down. It was a bit laggy. Again, that's obviously you know where I would experiment and figure out what resolution is best. And if you go into full screen mode, it puts it into game mode, which basically gives you better performance as well. So now let me show you something. If you go to system, you go to save and load state. So if you go to save state, go to save slot one. You can use the different save slots as well. If I go to system, shut down without saving. Now if I launch it up, double click it. It's got to go through the regular, you know, loading of the game. But if I go to system, load state, load slot one, it literally continues where I left off, which is fantastic because it means I'm not reliant on the built-in you know save system in the game to save at you know specific you know you know points i can save wherever whenever in the middle of a level like this uh, and it can have multiple slots and also the benefit it means i skip that intro process for uh, you know game because some games you know like black just take ages just to get through the intro and you know being able to you know avoid that really helps so that's it that's how you set up the pcsx2 emulator on your mac if you have any questions feel free to comment down below thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one take care bye